Gentleman yields, I now recognize Mr. Carrera from California. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Secretary, welcome. Thank you for being here. If I take a minute, let's talk about Congress's role in helping you do your job. Let's discuss achieving operational control. Fiscal year 2023 government funding package provided U.S. Customs and Border Patrol with over $7 billion in funding, including almost a 20% increase in Border Patrol. Not a single Republican in this committee voted for that package. Last year, 2023, this same funding package was the first to increase Border Patrol agents since 2011, as you said. Do you believe these extra Border Patrol officers help you do your job? I most certainly do, Congressman, and that is why our fiscal year 2024 budget seeks an additional 350 Border Patrol agents, as well as other personnel. Mr. Secretary, let's talk about fentanyl deaths in my district. I'm very disturbed, very concerned. Republicans have advocated capping, 20, capping the fiscal year 2022 budget at 2022 levels. Republicans seeking to essentially cut the funding for your department. That cap would essentially result in a reduction of 2,400 2,400 CBP agents and officers. Would that mean essentially that 155,000 pounds of cocaine would not be seized? Over 1,000 pounds of fentanyl would not have been seized? Over 2,000 pounds of heroin would not have been seized? How would reducing 2,400 agents at the border affect your job, sir? Congressman, if our budget were reduced as you identify, it would seriously, it would gravely harm uh, our ability to uh, apprehend individuals who are attempting to cross our border illegally. It would gravely harm our ability to interdict fentanyl and other narcotics coming through the ports of entry and elsewhere and cause other harm. And I should say with respect to fentanyl, the challenge that this drug, the death and destruction that this drug causes has been um, building year over year for a number of years. There were 58, nearly 58,000 fentanyl overdose deaths in 2020 alone. This is a challenge that we all have to work together to address. Fundamentally, fundamentally in the context of immigration, Thank you, Mr. Secretary. We're dealing with a broken system and we need reform. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, without any objection, I'd like to submit a letter for the record from the Office of Ledge Affairs to the Appropriations Committee that does a complete analysis of what capping fiscal year 2024 discretionary spending at 2022 levels would mean to the services of the Department of Homeland Security. Without objection, so ordered. And finally, in the last minute I have left, let's talk a big picture here, Mr. Ch Mr. Secretary. Refugees, after World War II, there were 60 million European refugees moving throughout the world. Wars, famine, COVID-19 have an interesting way of affecting the refugee movements. You stated a minute ago that this was not only a U.S. issue, but a issue for the continent? Is Colombia having issues with refugees? Are other nations in this continent having to address challenges with refugees? Is this a worldwide phenomena? Congressman, it most certainly is. Our hemisphere is gra uh, uh, gripped by um, an unprecedented level of migration since World War II. You mentioned the, the country of Colombia. Uh, Colombia now is a residence to approximately 2.5 million Venezuelans who have fled that authoritarian regime. The causes of people being on the move, of course, were spurred by COVID-19 pandemic, but also because of authoritarian regimes, public corruption, extraordinary poverty, violence, 
and other elements that force people to leave their homes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 